What's up? We are back with Wild Willow. And guess what? It didn't take me two months to make this video. Kind of took me a week because, well, this video is made in two separate occasions. I must be honest. You guys are going to notice some things that might be a little different. But that's okay because your girl's busy and I can't make a video in one day all the time. All right? I got a life outside of this. I'm not just a YouTuber. So I am excited, though, because this video is long overdue. I said from the very beginning when I started YouTubing that I was going to make an LED sign tutorial video. And we're finally doing the dang thing. But this might sadden some of you, but we must start from the beginning. And we will work our way up to the top notch LED signs. I didn't start, I just didn't just jump into making LED signs and make these really cool detailed signs, okay? I started at the bottom, all right? I didn't know what I was doing, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to start at the bottom, beginner level entry LED sign, uh, and we'll work our way up over a series of videos to get to some top-notch dope signs. The sign we're making is budget-friendly, and it's very easy to make if you guys have the right laser and the right tools and the right mindset. You could do it, too. So uh, I'm super excited. We're going to go into light burn a little bit. Not a lot. The design's already made. But I just want to show you a few things in there that might be helpful. We're going to go over the laser, and we're going to do the dang thing. So let's just get into it. Let's go check out the laser. Drum roll, please. Now introducing the Thunder Laser Nova 51 100 watt. I must say, this is the most exciting thing ever besides my children getting born and me getting married. But this is like next step, okay? My dreams have officially come true. So when I started my YouTube channel, um, getting something like this and partnering up with a laser company like Thunder Laser was something that I dreamt about, I prayed about, and I did not think it was going to happen so soon. I thought it was going to at least take me a couple years to get like some get something like this happen. Get, I can't talk, for something like this to happen to me. Um, and I am extremely grateful for Thunder Laser. Um, they are an amazing company. And I am so excited to be working with them. And I'm so excited to learn this laser and use it for my business and to watch my business grow. So thank you, Thunder Laser, for giving me this laser. And I'm super excited to create some content for you guys and show my viewers out there how to work this bad boy. So maybe it can inspire you guys to go get one because they're freaking dope. Okay, so now let's get into the project. So we're going to drop the laser bed down because anytime you're putting new material into your laser bed, you want to make sure it's lowered so you don't run into the issue of your laser head hitting the material that you're using. So let's hit the button down and drop it. All right, before I forget, we need to change out the laser lens here. Um, this laser comes with a standard two inch uh, laser uh, lens. Um, this is going to be a little bit better for uh, some finer detail, uh, but not good for cutting thick material. So what we're going to use for cutting our 12 millimeter plywood is this four inch laser lens. And this is going to be great for cutting that thicker uh, material. Quick little tip. If you like saving yourself a little bit of time or you're forgetful, what I did here is I put a label on my laser lens. Okay, now we want to bring the laser bed up and we are going to set the focus. I cut my own um, acrylic like measure thing out to and it has the numbers of what each size is what. So for the 12 millimeter we need 9 to 11 focus. So we need to go to 10. Okay so here we are in Lightburn. Um, what I did here on the sign, because this sign is a cheaper sign and they are on a budget, um, I made bridges uh, to go to the um, center of these letters so that these pieces will stay attached after everything's done cutting out. Um, an alternative option is to get acrylic, but it's also a more expensive option, and just put it on the back of your sign and then glue these pieces uh, down to the acrylic. These circles in each corner are the measurements I took on my standoffs. So I'm going to cut those holes out so it's easy to put my standoffs in and I know that they're all straight. 
we got it center and then now we are going to go over to our library always save everything in your library when you're working on your material um, right here I have plywood and this plywood is 12 millimeters cut and we are going to assign it to the layer we're going to go ahead and send it over and we're just going to title it sign and now it's ready to go all right, now that the job is sent over to the laser, we're gonna go ahead and hit file. We're gonna see our sign right up there. Hit enter. It should pop up on your screen right here, the whole design. Now we're gonna set our origin. Okay, I have it where I want it to start the framing up in that corner, so I'm gonna press origin and now frame. So huge upgrade from my old laser to this Thunder laser is that there's an air assist control uh, panel right here. I don't know if it's called a panel. Um, so the controls are right here. You can test your air and make sure your air is set before you run your projects. And the cool thing about this is it's automatic. So whenever you're going to engrave first, it will run its low air for engrave, whatever you set it to. And then it will kick on to the high air to whatever you set it to for your cut. So we're gonna run a quick little test. So over here for the high air, we're gonna hit test. And I had already set it, so it's pretty high. And then it will just turn off on its own. But you know what I forgot to do that's an important step is we need to sand this before we do any of our cuts. So let's get to sanding. I'm using 320 sandpaper and we're just gonna brush this down nice and smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and get this blown off. Beautiful. While this is running, I wanted to show you guys something kind of cool that I built to hold all of my material test grids. So I have a section for acrylic. I got my roll mark. There's my air compressor. Freaking loud. Got my leathers. And then my plywood, an MDF. Pretty neat, cool way to stay organized. I keep them right here next to my laser, love it. Oh my gosh, it's progressively getting hotter and hotter in my garage. Okay, so sign is all cut out. It cut out beautifully on the top, no uh, char, nothing. On the back though, I had a couple issues. Um, so I had to do some research on uh, the far side of the laser bed, so that's like the opposite side of where the laser head, uh, its home position is. So on the far side, I noticed that it did not cut all the way through um, on some of the letters and then also on the outer cut. So I did some research and what I found out is that whenever the laser head is traveling uh, the furthest away uh, from its home position, it tends to lose a little bit of power. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you might need to up your power a little bit. Don't, don't run your tests up near where the home position is. Uh, run your tests on the opposite side of the laser bed to get an idea if it's gonna cut through or not. Keep that in mind. I am able to get everything out with my razor blade, so that's, that's awesome, that's a huge plus. But the goal is, at the end of the day, what we need to get to is not being able to have to use a razor blade and these just popping out. All right, we got our sign flipped over and it looks amazing. I did a light sanding with 400 uh, grit sandpaper over the top of it to clean up just a few little char marks that I saw. And then when I dive in a little closer, I noticed some like chipping issues in some of the letters, uh, especially this S right here. Um, I don't think that's from the laser losing the power on the far side, like I mentioned earlier. Um, I think that's a glue buildup in the plywood, which you're going to run into issues like that. Also, these little tiny brushes. I got these on Amazon in like a huge pack, super cheap. I'll put those in the description as well. If you guys are throwing these away, stop throwing them away. Keep them. I use them all the time. I have a whole bucket full of them. And I use them for when I spray paint all the things so let's dip this in here so our sign looks amazing so glad i paid attention to the detail because after staining the insides of these letters they look so much better that black stain actually worked amazing 
Um, now we can get into the actual staining process because it is a process, okay? We ain't just going to whip out the stain and go, but we got to do some things first. So what I'm going to be using today is our Minwax pre-stain and our dark walnut wood stain. My super handy dandy can opener. And lastly, we need to grab our very high quality cut up t-shirt wax. I forgot to mention to grab gloves. Please wear your gloves. If you guys are not pre-staining your wood, then there's your first mistake, okay? You need to be pre-staining your wood. It makes the stain go on so much smoother. Normally I use a foam brush, but I don't have any on hand right now. Whenever I apply the pre-stain, it works amazing. Um, but today we're just going to use a rag. And you're just gonna go with the grain. Now we're gonna use our dark walnut stain. To stain the glass. Now we're just gonna we're just gonna get after it. And sometimes I go in with a a second rag that doesn't have any stain on it to kind of buff it out after I apply the stain so there's like no streak marks. So I should have stained the back first and put my logo on the back because I engraved my logo on the back of all my signs, but I forgot. So after this dries, we'll go put it back in the laser, engrave the logo, and stain the back. So far, you can see that the uh, pre-stain did its job. Everything looks super smooth. I always try to take the easy way, but it always ends up being the hard way, it seems like, with things like this. Um, I've been thinking to myself as I've been staining this that I should have sanded and pre-stained the back because, or at least sanded it, because staining the back of this, not sanded or pre-stained, it's just soaking the stain up so fast, and it's taking forever to do, and I'm freaking over it. Now I'm wasting all the stain. It's taking forever. Gosh. So, learn from my mistake. So I kind of got the lights all sprawled out on here. We're going to be using Gobi lights. Uh, keep the box for your customer because they can scan the QR code uh, to get their phone hooked up on the app. Um, so let's just get started on these lights because this can be a little time consuming. Um, as you go, you're going to think to yourself, oh, I should have gone this way. And then you're going to end up redoing it. So don't get, just be prepared for that. That you, When you start, you're probably going to have to redo it a couple of times because you're going to run into things on how you should bend it in other locations on the backboard. So um, just have patience with this. This takes patience. So let's just go ahead and get started. All right, skirt, hold up. Pump the brakes for a second. I got to give you guys some useful information because I almost forgot to tell you guys some things that I think you need to know about LED lights. So really quick, and then we'll get right back into the sign. So when it comes to the LED lights, they have like the cheapest option, which is RGB. And what that light strip does, it just gives you one solid color and it will just show that one color, whether it's flashing or chasing itself, but it's just going to show one color. And that is the cheapest lights you can get. I don't buy those lights. Okay. The next uh, exp more expensive option would be RGBIC. And what it does, and there's a sign behind me, my Wild Willow sign, that is a good example of RGBIC. So it will show different colors playing at once, multiple different patterns, chasing each other. Super cool. But one of the downfalls about the RGBIC is that it doesn't have a pure, like, bright white on it. Um, it does pull a white color, um, but it's not like a pure bright white. Um, you can see a, a hint or a tint of one of the colors in the white that they have. So that's a little bit of a downfall, but don't you worry. There is a little bit more expensive of an option for LED lights, and it would either be RGBICW or it would, it would say RGBIC with white light. So 
kind of says it in the name, what makes it better is that it does come with a white light in it. So you're getting all your different colors, all your bright colors flashing, chasing each other. Um, and it also will have the bright white in it as well, its own separate light. So that's really cool. I just used those on a, a previous sign that I did, not this one, but the one I did before this. And it literally came out so amazing and I will never go back. If the person can afford it, I'm putting it on there. But this sign that we're doing today, she was on a budget, so we're not using the most expensive LED lights. So I hope this information is useful for you guys. I am going to link uh, the lights that I use in the description down below for you guys to check out. And if you guys have any questions, please let your girl know. We're going to need some tape. And what I did here is I got a bunch of pieces ready to go. We're probably going to need more, but this just makes it easier. So as you go, you could tape it down. Um, wait for your backboard to dry completely. I tried doing this yesterday. Whenever the stain wasn't fully dry, don't do it. Waste your time. <laughs> it won't stick. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start <clears throat> this up a little bit because that just doesn't look good hanging off. So I think we're going to start like about here. And I don't like to go right to the edge. I like to come a little bit in. So whenever you come to a corner and you're going to need to bend the light, you cannot bend the light on these on the actual lights. You can bend in between. You can bend a little bit here. That's okay. But you do not want to bend on the actual light because it can cause it to not work. All right, so these lights you're able to cut, but you can only cut them in certain spots. Um, I had zigzagged this because I wanted lights to come in where there was no lights here, but it put it in an awkward place for me to cut it down here. So I'm just going to run this kind of straight across. Okay, so we're all done taping. Okay, I know it looks a little messy, but just... Wait to the end. We are not going to be cutting this just yet, okay? We want to leave this here just in case when we're done gluing and uh, adhering this down. You never know if you might need a little extra. So we're not going to do that yet. Um, we're going to do that at the very end. But for now, we are going to start here and we are going to work our way up and continue to go around. All right, hey up there. We are going to test the lights one more time to make sure everything's good to go before we start sticking this thing on. So let's go ahead and do that. Look at that. It is lit. Lit. All right, so we are good to go. Let's proceed. Okay, so we are about to cut the LED strip, the final part. Uh, but before we do that, we need to go over a few things. One of them being that you need to make sure that you're not connected to power when you cut it so you don't get shocked. Um, another thing is Govi does say they don't recommend you cutting the lights. I've cut them on every single light uh, LED sign that I've made, and I've never had any issues. So... I'm leaving it up to you guys to decide if you want to cut your LED lights or not. Don't just go off of me. You do it at your own risk. I personally have never had any issues with it. So um, there's your warning. Don't come after me if something happens, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get to snipping. All right, everybody. So we are all done with our sign and it turned out amazing. Everybody who's watched through this video, I really hope that I was able to give some good informative information to you guys and hopes to help you guys uh, start your first LED sign. It's really easy. Don't overthink it. And we are going to work our way up to the top. So if you guys aren't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button because we are going to get into the more advanced LED signs down the road. So you don't want to miss out on that. Everybody who is subscribed already to my channel and takes the time to watch my videos and leave such kind comments. You guys are seriously so nice and I appreciate all of you. Uh, I hope everybody has a fantastic day and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.